Now you produced the album yourself. Was that a stressful experience, or are you getting a dab hand in the uh, in the studio these no, days? No, I'm getting. You know, I'm, I'm working my way around. You know, I got my engineer who kind of does all the computer stuff, and I'm the guy. Who's, I'm like the vibe guy. You know, like that's my role and tones and vibe. So uh, yeah, it was. I mean, I'm I'm really stoked. I, you know, I really think that like from project to project, I've just gotten better. You know, from through the ashes to seasons wither to battery to Roadrunner United. You know, like every time along the way I've learned something and you know, I really feel like this is definitely my best production work so far. It's it's uh you know, it's not you know, the as far as like the, the work part of it, you know, like that's just like the rehearsal studio, you know. All the arguments are in the rehearsal studio, you know. That part sucks and you know, let's kill that and you know, do this and try that and you know. Once we get into the studio, it's pretty much, you know, it's pretty solid. You know, we have a couple of spontaneous things, but, you know. Are you a workhorse with your bandmates, or do you, like, crack the whip a lot with them all? I, uh, I, was, I was cracking the whip pretty good on this one, you know. Like, I had to push them pretty hard to, you know, they were hating me. There's a couple of days where they hated me, <laughs> you know. But in the end, it's like, you know, I just want, you know, I want them to try, at least just try things and try different things, or, you know, if I think... They did a lead that you know was far below their ability. Like I would be like, that lead sucks, and you need to do another one. You know, like and you know push them to do a better one. And in the end, it would make them better. You know, because I got some killer guys in my band. You know, like really talented, and I want to see them fucking do killer shit. You know, just so I can look over on the side of the stage and go, fuck, that's killer. <laughs> you know, like so it's partially for selfish reasons too. You know. Cool. Now, uh, Dave actually told Roxanne that he had a crafty cigarette because he was so stressed out. Yeah. Is that true? Yeah, that was. That was a tough day, man. That was like <laughs> a, one of those. That was just one of those days, you know, where the fucking guitar headstock broke, the computer crashed, the amp fucking went down, all in one day. We were just like, "What the fuck?" And it was like after you know a week of that, so I finally broke down, and smoked my first cigarette in like twelve months <laughs> or twelve years, I should say, my first cigarette in twelve years. Uh, yeah. I take it you haven't gone back to them. I yet. haven't. I was just like, you know, cigarettes suck. <laughs> those first couple of hits, I was like, ah, oh, this is amazing. <laughs> this is the best cigarette I've ever had. But then by the time I got to the end of it, I was like, oof, oof. I can't hang. Cool. Now you're using Colin Richardson again to uh, to yes. mix it. In yeah. He's almost like a fifth member of Machine Head these days. Pretty I mean, much. He's done yeah. everything bar one album, hasn't he? Exactly. Yeah. He's done six albums. This is our sixth album together. Right. Is it a case of if it's not broke, don't fix it with him? I, just, I mean, he's he's just, all, t in my opinion, he's one of the greatest metal producers out there, you know, and he always has been, you know, on Burn My Eyes, he made Burn My Eyes sound killer, Bullet From My Valentine sounds killer, you know, go through his whole career and, like, everything he does just sounds fucking killer, and uh, to me, you know, to, you know, especially having that long of a relationship with somebody, it's like, you know what you're going to get, and him and I really don't even need to like you know I can just give him a look he can just kind of hear a part that I recorded and kind of already know what I want you know like most of the stuff like I, I would have told him like in mix notes but like I just kind of like let him do his thing I was like well I'm just gonna let you be creative and do your own thing and like you know if, if I don't like it then I'll let you know and pretty much every single thing that I would have told him he did you know so it's like cool it's a cool feeling to have like that kind of a rapport with somebody so and, you know, we went with, a, you know, we have tried other producers and we've tried other mixers and, you know, we had you know, Johnny K mix it, we've had, like, the some other guy, we had Terry Day mix the one record and it just, you know, it wasn't the same dynamic, you know, it's like he, he's one of those guys who, you know, a lot of the other guys out there, you know, they kind of have, like, their trip and they just apply the one trip to everything they do. So you're going to get that snare trigger and you're going to get this EQ and, you know, I'm only going to go past this mark on the EQ mark and it's only going to be, you know, so. Whereas he kind of mixes it up and he caters it to each band and kind of gives them their own trip and I like that, you know. Cool. cool. We like that. Good, good. Now, um, Through the Ashes sort of reinstated Machine Head back into the forefront of metal after 
probably, you know, arguably a few sort of weird years for the band career-wise. Are you happy with how it all went in, in retrospect on that album? Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, we still, I mean, we still did, I mean, we sold out, you know, Supercharger, we sold out the Brixton, so, you know, like, regardless of what, you know, the reaction record buying public or media or whatever, it's like the fans stood by us, so, um, you know, it was a trippy time, but, uh, Through the Ashes, you know, definitely, you know, made a huge impact, and it's, it's weird for us to think that, like, we're the, we're 12 years into our career and we're like the biggest we've ever been, <laughs> you know, like it's, it's kind of hard to get your head around, you know, because like it's like most bands would be kind of in their twilight at this point. And we're kind of on, you know, we're on the upswing and it's like weird, you know, it's like I didn't imagine this, you know, and uh, yeah, it's killer, man, you know. So what was the vibe like when you started the new album? Was it kind of like extending on from Through the Ashes? be kind of like all supercharged so to speak to coin a phrase and ready to go with it was it a good mood in for writing we uh you know the we didn't really know what to do <laughs> you know we were like fuck what do we do now it's like it was you know where do we go from here um you know and, and initially we started writing like pretty long songs right off the bat and we you know kind of stopped and we're like you know maybe we should kind of strip it back down you know through the ashes worked if it ain't broke don't fix it you know uh, you know and so we tried that you know we ended up trying stripping some of the songs down and and in the end we just we weren't digging it you know it just didn't feel right to do that like it kind of sucked you know, we were like, I'm getting off way more by playing these long songs with all these changes. Like, it just seems funner. And so we just kind of got to the point where we were like, you know, we just need to kind of, you know, we don't need to be cognizant of time lengths or a number of changes per song or whether radio might look at it or MTV might scoff at it because it's too long or how are we going to edit it or, you know, none, none of that should be none of that's even a reason to write music you know we should only be worrying about if it kicks ass or if it sucks and you know like we started writing these songs and you know we started reaching the 10 minute mark and we were like wow are we going crazy or <laughs> is this really good or is this kind of nutso or you know but you know we'd live with it for a month and you know a month later that 10 minute song would still be fucking killer you know and entertaining and fun to play and great to to sing along to and and uh, and it just felt right, and we were like, you know, this is just what we should be doing. And so the Black Men, Machine Head's prog album, then yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know, <laughs> prog rock album. Prog, yeah. I, you know, a lot of bands are you know, Macedon, like that's prog. Like I don't, I don't know if we're prog. You know, I don't know if I consider that. It's probably. Prague-ish, you know. <laughs> cool, cool. So, if you could just sum up the vibe on this album, then, and what, what we can expect when it hits the streets in what March time? March twenty seventh, yeah. Um, brutal, turning the screw, um, edgy, very much a, an album of protest. And uh, and a big, beautiful monster. Cool, Robert Flynn. Thank you very much. Right on, man. Cool.